news that are fair, news that are objective, accountable, impartial, truthful, and accurate. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, media freedom uh, remains a priority for us as legislators. The main task ahead then would lie in ensuring sufficient speed in decision-making processes, allowing widespread participation in policy-making, guaranteeing accountability of decision-makers and stakeholders, and uh, encouraging responsible behavior among all those disseminating information and using the Internet. Given the rapid pace and wide extent of developments in the Internet world, it is imperative to call for frequent, broad, and open dialogues between various sectors of society to best address the issues affecting our media practitioners, including uh, the daunting challenge of utilizing the Internet without adverse effects on the social economic fabric. I thank you. <coughs> another, another, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I were somewhere, I would have uh, used the other terms to describe. But hey, uh, thank you for the thorough and uh, articulate and eloquent articulation of uh, key issues. Uh, honorable, uh, indeed, uh, government uh, must uh, work the talk. They must walk the talk. They must not indicate left when they are turning right uh, on this issue. So thank you very much for emphasizing it. Indeed, journalists need to be protected. At least we create a, an animal farm kind of a setup. A, an animal farm kind of a setup. Right, we will proceed. And once again, uh, honorable, congrats uh, on your recent appointment as the chairperson. Uh, women are seizing discourse. Foucault argues discourse is the power yet to be seized, but looks like uh, we are working towards the right direction. Several women chairpersons, we are seizing discourse in this room. Let us pump pump for our chairpersons, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are becoming a gender sensitive society, which is important uh, in the 21st century. And at this moment, I will invite uh, my colleague, uh, Comrade Mponda. Uh, finally, he has arrived from the seat of progress. He is back from the seat of progress. He had attended an urgent, uh, urgent business in Gweru, but he, I, I made uh, the flight finally uh, allowed him to be back to the capital. Comrade Mponda. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, William Ponda. I represent the Southern Africa Editors Forum. Uh, it's a regional body for, for senior journalists, editors, and uh, media managers. Uh, all protocol observed. I'm sorry, Amangwana. This is a commemoration under the theme Strengthening Investigations and Prosecution to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists comes at a time when journalists and the media workers in the Sadiq region continue to be arrested, detained, abducted, assaulted while conducting their lawful professional duties of providing trusted information on pertinent social, economic, and political issues. In the past year, we have seen unshamed attempts to silence the media and restrict the right to freedom of expression in countries such as Madagascar, Zambia, Botswana, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, South Africa, in Tanzania, with journalists being harassed or jailed simply for doing their work. Saif is deeply concerned of journalists who have lost their lives in Africa and other parts of the world for simply doing their work. To end impunity for crimes against journalists, 
One of the measures being undertaken by TAIEF and SAIEF is the development of a continental monitoring and reporting platform that will cascade down to the regional and national levels to promote the protection and safety of journalists, including community broadcasters and freelance journalists. Editors' forums and other partners who register alerts on, on media harassment, journalists arrested or jailed to the African Union and the UN, and those two organizations who in turn request responses from respective countries. The creation of a continental portal where high quality and fact checked content will be shared by African media is being done with the support of UNESCO, the African Union, and other uh, uh, stakeholders. SAIEF is working with other media organizations in the region, like the Media Alliance of Zimbabwe, to establish a coalition, a regional media network, which will bring together key media players to put pressure on governments not to prosecute journalists. For freedom of, of expression to exist, there must be a free press and the safety and security of journalists and Each country in Kenya, Egypt, Burkina Faso, Burundi, Liberia, Mozambique, South Africa. Unfortunately, only 11% of the cases were solved. Impunity for the killings remains at 9 of the 10 cases, meaning that the vast majority of killers continue to walk free of legal consequences for their actions. This becomes a driver for more killings in Africa. Promoting the safety of journalists and combating, combating impunity for those who, have, who, for those who attack them are central elements within our support for press freedom on all media platforms. We are also concerned with the devastating impact of the novel coronavirus has aid on lives and economies across the region, leading to a job losses in the newsrooms, salary cuts, and closure of some publications. COVID-19 continues to, to infect millions across the world and killing thousands in the process. The crisis demand more and not fewer media outlets to report on this pandemic, pandemic, pandemic and to keep the public informed not with misinformation and disinformation but with trusted ethical information because it involves their lives. Financial aid is urgently needed to assist media houses in the Sadiq region that have closed down, and those on the verge of closure, to allow them to continue providing this much-needed information to the public. 
We believe that if media organizations and stakeholders come together, a rescue fund could be established to support the good quality journalism in the Sadiq region. During our interaction with the Sadiq Parliamentary Secretariat, it was noted that there were few functioning organizations or journalist unions in the region, leaving all the advocacy and lob lobbying work to CSOs. I want to take this opportunity to challenge associations and unions dir who directly represent the interests of journalists to play an active role in advocating for change in matters that affect them, alongside the good work being done by civic society organizations. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Right, another pom-pom for Comrade Willy. Right, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Willy Mponda. Uh, in terms of how a uh, discourse structures uh, uh, our everyday, I would have a desire to have another presenter, who is not the presenter, who I'm going to call upon at the moment, but uh, because of circumstances, um, at this moment, I have to call Honorable uh, Nick Mangwana, who is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Information, Publicity and Broadcast Services. Uh, Honorable Mangwana uh, is running. Honorable, you are welcome. Thank Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. That's better. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to first acknowledge the presence of um, Dr. Leighton Mube, our moderator, um, and uh, the presence of our new chairperson, um, the chairperson to our portfolio committee, Honorable Mokone. Um, who has come with um, very familiar honorable members of that portfolio committee with whom we have worked very well um, over the, let me put it like years, over the last two years plus. Uh, honorable Paraza and uh, Honorable Chikwinya, we acknowledge your presence. Uh, and of course, uh, the, we can't go far without talking about um, the mass chairperson. It wouldn't be fair. Also seeing that she, uh, Vivian, uh, blah blah shangash. Um, <laughs> seeing that she, oh, double barrels don't do well for me. Um, she, seeing that she had also nice things, some kind of nice things to say about the ministry. I think I need to retain the courtesy. And uh, I wanted first to acknowledge the presence of which is not is not present, but I wanted to acknowledge Honorable Ziambi Ziambi. I didn't do that at the beginning because. Um, I think the dude set me up. Um, I, I accepted the invitation uh, under the impression that there will be two, at least two of us government officials to take all the bashing, and I realized that he exposed me. So I'm taking all the punches alone, but uh, I'm not really alone because um, I have a colleague in the Assistant Commissioner Nyati. I acknowledge your presence. And um, my good friend there, um, from UNESCO. Yusuf, thank you for being around. Now, Sylvia, where are you? There is my good officer, Sylvia. She prepared a very nice speech for me. Um, now, going through that speech and having listened to what I listened to, uh, I think we have to abandon this, don't we? I think you agree with me, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> the setup did not end where I pointed to, but the setup also came when uh, I was supposed to present soon after the tea break. But the good doctor uh, who tends to set up a la carte menus decided to set up a new a la carte menu by saying that, no, dude, sit there and absorb the punches 
and then represent later. And I think uh, in, his, um, in the abundance of his, his wisdom, he felt that um, if I go before all these so-called solidarity messages, which are actually just punches and missiles, um, <laughs> it wouldn't be fair on, the, on other interlocutors and the stakeholders. I have no problem with that. The punches came, they were absorbed. Now, I'm debating right now, the gears in my brain are going. I think you can hear the sounds. Uh, the, de the debate that's going on there is, do I respond? If I respond, am I not taking a risk of sounding extremely defensive? Um, or do I just make my intervention? <sighs> Maybe we should combine, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. <sighs> ah, no, no, no. Don't worry, Bo. If you, if you consider some of the punches you, most of, some of you guys throw on Twitter and I absorb them, I think... Uh, oh, no, I block those who turn personal and all so forth. Uh, Name my hate campaigners because you see our constitution, Pamam's point, the PSA section 61, and whatever, to, it talks about um, hate language. So, and that is a proviso that's given as a caveat to say, you know, freedom of expression goes this far, but when it comes to hate language, it shouldn't. So, that way, I tend to implement the constitution by blocking hate language from a timeline. Right. The new dispensation, the Second Republic, which is led by President Emerson Dambuzo Munangagwa, is a beautiful thing. The speech has started. Now, this, this, this is where you start clapping. <laughs> How is it such a beautiful thing? It is a beautiful thing because I'm yet to think of a country that has opened itself so much, a government that has exposed itself to the people so much, starting with right at the beginning of the Second Republic, where President Mnangagwa rolled out a session which happens every Tuesday after every cabinet meeting, where the public is informed of what was being discussed in cabinet. I'm trying to wreck my brains to come up with a different country that has got such an institution in place. I, have, I don't have one yet. I'm not saying there's none. But I'm saying there are not so many. If there is any, probably there is none, except us. That's a hallmark of openness and transparency. But we are talking about impunity, perceived, or real. This is again where I expect that ta, ta, ta. Ah, dead silence. We started the reform agenda immediately after the Second Republic came into place. We walked the journey of um, repealing IPA together. One of the hardest things or the most hated thing IPA was said to have was the criminalization of the profession of journalism. Now, all the solidarity messages, except that of Vivian, which was partially correct, but not very correct, didn't really acknowledge the removal of criminalization of journalism by repealing IPA. But then you can't talk of um, crimes against journalism or journalists without talking of the criminalization of journalism. So the biggest thing there was removed, IPA. Why was Vivian partially correct? Allow me to call you that, Mrs. Ma, Mrs. Jangash. Marana Jangash. <laughs> um, IPA was repealed. It was not partially repealed. It's gone. And I think this being the first conference we are coming to, 
after the repealing of IPA. I think it's a big thing. I expected to see banners everywhere saying IPA is gone. I, I mean, knowing Honorable Paraza, how you fought so hard for it to go, how much you hated it, even though you are ZANU PF. It, <laughs> it was very clear that IPA was not a ZANU PF thing. It wasn't loved by ZANU PF or whatever, and I'm not here holding a brief for ZANU PF, I'm here holding the brief for government. But IPA had a cross section, cross sectional um, antipathy, which it, it had generated. So it is gone, it went in July. And come on, guys, join me. <laughs> of course, because <laughs> journalism is no longer being criminalized. But I have to admit that there are certain things that are happening which shouldn't happen in the practice of journalism. Um, I think the SG is heckling me. Ah, that's a heckle there. I thought, uh, I thought he was heckling me. Right. I, we are going there. Walk with me, SG. Just walk with me. Patient space. Um, you see, when the lockdown regulations were promulgated um, end of March, there were certain professions, practices, and businesses that were classified as essential services. Our ministry made a mistake. Our document went late to the AG's office. And your practice was not included at that point. But it didn't mean that we had not said that. So in principle, we had all agreed that your practice was an essential service. And it proved that you were an essential service months later and even then. Well, how did you prove that you were an essential service? Because you know what? You deserve a pom-pom. You played a critical role in making sure people remained safe by driving the information, by disseminating the information on COVID-19. Yes, initially we did have some infodemics, as they call all these lies people talk about, the epidemic, uh, epidemics. So we ha did have some uh, infodemics, but I think uh, it quickly receded. And information with integrity went to the people. So yes, give yourself a pom pom. You played a critical role, and we were right, you were an essential service. But that delay in gazetting you as an essential service did bring its own difficulties. Some of you were inconvenienced but you classified that as harassment. I'm sorry. Some of you were actually not treated well. But some were generally just inconvenienced. You were made to wait there for an hour or so while certain telephone calls were being made around. And I can assure you, and I've got a witness in the house. Do I have a witness? Yeah, I do. Um, I can assure you that every journalist that was stopped by the police for 10 plus minutes, I was informed, and my office spoke to his office immediately, and he spoke to his officers on the ground. So in terms of the system, the system works because we are on your side. We are your advocates. And by saying we, I do not mean the Minister of Information only. I'm saying his department is because every time we call him or when I call him, we agree that this shouldn't happen if something has gone wrong. What we have, how, what, I, how does this happen? Why does this happen? What we have at the moment is a little gap which is between the law, the policy, and the aspiration on one side and practice and culture on the other side. So the work that we are seized with right now is to bridge that gap so that the law, the policy, and the aspirations are reconciled with the culture and the practice. The culture and the practice, which goes down to the operation, or operative, or operational level, right to the officer on the ground. The officer on the ground has to understand what the new dispensation wants. 
what does President Mnangagwa want in regard to media freedom? How does he want journalists to be, uh, to be treated? And I'm sorry to say that this takes, change of culture takes a bit longer than we would all wish for it. You can change legislation, you can change regulations, you can change everything. But culture takes long. I would love to come in a situation where we snap our fingers and it all goes away. But it doesn't work like that. Because culture is embedded, culture is ingrained. And culture, by nature, is an accumulation of unregulated behaviors, most likely learned over time. Now, to disabuse of things that you've learned over time and you embedded, and they, they give you sort of, some sort of power, to just disabuse of them like that, it may not work. It will take a lot of training. It will take a lot of information giving for that to change. And I believe my colleague agrees with me. Where it happens, I'm just talking about where excesses happens. Because excesses do not happen all the time. And they do not happen with every officer. They do not happen with everyone on the ground. Just one or two officers that do that. Just one or two officers may get into a room where a, co a crime is perceived to have happened. And they will just round up everybody and say, we'll take you with us to go and screen. And if you're a journalist, you go home. But the, our sensitive colleagues in the journalism profession, they would still quickly register that as harassment. If, um, if a burglar has taken place and I'm found among them, and I'm rounded up with everybody and say, we'll clear you when you get to the police station. And I print out my ID. They say, we don't know if it's authentic. But let's just clarify it at the police station. Am I harassed? Okay, then I'm a victim. <laughs> These are some of the nuances that come within with what we are dealing with here. Maybe I also have to change a bit of my perception. Huh. But we are saying, and the good dog did say, I quote, we are heading somewhere. We are heading somewhere. Meaning we are in the right direction. I think the most important thing here is our direction of travel. Because you can only make progress if your direction of travel is correct. And actually, you are traveling. So if you are heading somewhere, there is movement. There is motion going to a certain cardinal point. The cardinal point is where all of you will feel very free to practice your profession. But your first line of defense, even in terms of perception, is to say it is to be professional. Even in your approach, even when law enforcement agents stop you, just remain professional. People point out, I, th I saw Misa issued a statement yesterday regarding two journalists, one of them is, is, who is Bamo, um, who because they were recording um, certain things which are considered security um, items around Bianeanda um, statue. Well, yeah, it is actually security, because in other places, just a, a train station is a security establishment. You cannot photograph it. You cannot videograph it. it, it I, said public I said public train station. Train station. In England is one of them. You cannot record it. So, if if certain things are being put, I'm not justifying what happened yesterday. I'm just saying perception. So they were stopped. But you know what? Their level of cooperation, they found me straight immediately. And I spoke to the officers on the ground and we chatted a way forward. And he texted me back and said the officers were great. They were polite and everything and were released and were gone. Inconvenient, but he's, they, I think the approach of the guys was also professional. So your last first line of defense is to remain professional. When I'm stopped, I'm a permanent secretary. When I'm stopped at a roadblock, trust me, if I'm told to, walk, to come out of the car, I always come out of the car. And obviously, but, <laughs> but I think Jinana Frog Jambi, Toy Toy, and the rest, and it's down to the officer, not to the culture we, 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 we want. And that's, that definitely is abuse. And they, in cases where it has happened, it, it's not only journalists even uh, individuals. So, so let's walk together. 
let's be professional. Let's be fair. Let's have information that's integrated. Let's give people a right to reply or to respond when we write our stories. And from our point as a ministry, we will stand with you all the way. We will work with you. We will defend our profession. We will defend our sector. Sometimes where you expect us to issue a statement, because we shouldn't be a, a government that speaks at cross purposes, we may issue a broad statement which does not directly address what you want us to address because we cannot shout at another government department. That's not our job. Our job is to speak for them. So we will not shout at them. So you may be disappointed that we are not doing that, but I can assure you, behind the scenes, we are talking to them. And when we need to use strong language, we will use that strong language. I've got a witness in the house. I thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a round of applause for Honorable Mangbana. I want to congratulate you because you didn't see it over in the world. Right, the, uh, you know, discourse authorizes those who can pump, pump, and those who can pump, pump. You know, yeah, Maokaro was in a chill and mirror and I did not end up. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mangbana. Uh, and thank you very much uh, for spending so much time with us. You know, Honorable Mangwana, I remember in the Bible, at one time, I'm not very religious, but I'm somewhat religious. But what I remember at one time, uh, Jesus, I think the episode or the event is referred to as the... Ah, all right. Guys, sorry, somebody mistakenly took... A, a phone which does not belong to him or he, which was being used for a good example. Oh, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> so, I, 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 I I, I hope this, I hope. <laughs> so, so I hope this one is not a, a harassment uh, by, by, the, by our PIMSEC. Okay. All right, guys. So I was talking about uh, the so-called, uh, this, this episode about, uh, the, was it the configuration? Uh, when Jesus uh, climbed on the mountain uh, with these two disciples, that was three, John, James, and Peter. Pardon me if I tend to uh, miss something there. But what I remember later on, Peter requested his guns, ah, what about if we can just pitch my tents here and spend the rest of the night or stay longer with Jesus? It's because uh, he had enjoyed, but he forgot that some of the, uh, the society or other disciples wanted or were expecting Jesus' services. So I'm speaking with reference to Honorable Mangwana. would love to spend more, 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 or much, much, much time with him. That's why I uh, deliberately said perhaps you will present a uh, solidarity message later. But thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mangwana. Uh, you have a busy schedule. So I would like to thank you uh, for bearing with us. But at this moment, I know you are running, uh, once again running in court. I would, I, would, I, would, I would be happy, and I think the room would be happy, if you can just take one or two uh, questions from the house. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's your time. If you have anything burning that you want to ask, Comrade SG. Uh, thank you very much. Uh You strongly condemn to all the harassments of journalists that has taken place. Did I hear you clearly? Of course, I'm pulling your leg. But, um, <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. And then to get to my second question, 
this is um, I'm just um, I would want to find out uh, your views or your thoughts around uh, how after doing so much work around dismantling AIPA uh, your views on what rolling out the Patriot Act will do to all this that has happened. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see the connection uh, <laughs> between the two. That's number one. Number two. Um, number two. I'm sure this thing has been revisited. There is no Patriot Act coming as far as I know. What I know is that there is an amendment to the current legislation, which is the Codification Act, criminal law. Yeah. So there is no new Patriot Act, but the principles that would, underpin, that would have underpinned the Patriot Act um, are the ones that are going in there, which basically says do not commit treason against your country. I, I think that's basically that, that what the principles are saying. Do not plot against your country with foreigners. Is that so bad? If it was so bad, then Edward Snowden would not be in Russia hiding away from the American establishment. Because the American establishment are looking for him for plotting against this country. If it was so bad, then Charles Manning would not be in prison. If it was so bad, then would not have um, Julian uh, Assange being tried or being extra, extradited to the United States because this is about our United States national security. Initially, they, they said it's rape, so he has to face rape in Sweden so that they would move him. Then the Swedish quashed the rape allegations. But he's still there at Belmarsh prison in, in South London. Um, I don't think it's so bad when it's, it's safeguarding our national security. Uh, unless you, are in t you intend to plot against this state, then I'm sorry, Wejira, uh, because that it's only so bad when you are plotting against the country. Akunamuzi do not have conversation with anybody, but conversation with certain implications. But however, we are still in the infancy of even that amendment bill. Why? Because until Richenda Kubaneri, Richenda Kuma MP, we are at the principal principal stage. We are not even at the bill stage. What came out of cabinet were the underpinning principles. So it has been my details, my nuances, my chi. If I may say those are mobilizers, my civil society organization talks about it. We have to people who are not our. It's okay. No democracy, actually. So I'm saying we hear the voice of the people at that point. And our good parliamentarians are here to hear that voice of the people. Thank you. I'm not sure about during the reportage. I don't know if they got, got, got it right or during the reporting of, um, of a, an offense. But generally, um, in many countries, including the United States, publishing the name of a CIA agent, no doubt about it, United States, just publishing or kumu expose, that one is a CIA agent. Check it out. Check it out. So, but in, relating, in relation to a, a perceived crime, I'm not too sure. But uh, I think you should But uh, CIA, uh, that, uh, that intelligence officers, if, if it's good for the goose, it must be good enough for the gander. Kanamati Mimi Ndo, leader of the free world. You are in a lawyer, Kadaro, Tikaisayen, market a problem. Mago made a foot. Ah, sad end. Yeah. 
Do you want a report? Yeah. Hey. Hey. No, my CIO, uh, uh, my intelligence. I can't do it. I am a broad principles. Teacher, teacher, this still into legal language. Could you make a sense? So I got to get a good debate. My principles are debate or cabinet. I'm sorry, Mama Wana. I just got published. I just got a post cabinet. I'm going to get a post cabinet. I'm going to get a post cabinet. I'm going to get a post cabinet. Zichaenda ku your own PLC as well, and they will say this is wrong. It will come out. Ah, we don't better draft it, man. No, don't better draft it, man. I oh, my soldier, I need my badge. I need my, I need my thing. My dog collars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I think th th I think that one has been discussed enough. Thank you, thank you very much for the clarification and uh, interventions made by our honourable legislators. At this moment, I think that will be the last contribution. Save another. One. I have said two. Okay, I will allow you. Think, thanks, thanks, PS. Uh, I wanted to check um, is the struggles between the Minister of ICTs and media being resolved. Uh, pertaining to data protection. Um, is the ministry's uh, bill still on its way or uh, you, you succumbed to pressure? Uh, then the second one is uh, broadcasting services uh, amendment bill. Uh, which stage is it at? Um, since the principles, it was never then subjected to further engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Amoy. So, so, uh, uh, okay, sorry, do you want before, me to take the other one? I... Sorry, before you, you respond, maybe just so that uh, it's uh, on record, uh, criminal defamation fell before the unbundling of uh, IPA, so that it's, it's on record. So it's, um, it's not, uh, uh, criminalization of journalism, I guess it's about criminal def def defamation. I don't know find the offense, if you have the right type, I guess not give a Right. Um, directly answering to Tabani Moyo's question, um, we got uh, cabinet direction in as far as um, how to proceed in our um, overlapping issues um, between the uh, protection of personal information and data protection um, act. I mean, in its, in its long name. <laughs> The direction was that um, the cyber security, whatever, and data protection, let them do whatever they need to do. Once they are done, we will then sit down and look at whether there are still any gaps which, um, which come from uh, Section 57 of the Constitution, a, a sort of unlegislated un areas. So it's just we would legislate those unlegislated areas. So meaning, even if it, it means our bill was going to be, is going to be four pages, so be it. As long as it's now see our legislative gaps in terms of protector, your personal information, and your privacy. So that's the direction we took. So our, our bill is on its way. I think that's, that's more direct to your, to your question. Then uh, regarding BSA, BSA has come to Cabinet Committee on Legislation, I think about three or four times so far. So it's always work in progress. It comes in, something is wrong, and the, the ministers say no. Um, that is, we don't want that, we don't want that. It goes back for redrafting. And then it comes back, it goes back for redrafting. Again, it's on its way. Would wish, we, we had wished to get all the bills uh, out of the way. In fact, I wrote it out of the way last year. Um, tied out tied out of the way this year, but Tatuane Tao now, to allow to delay on the media practitioner's bill and the Shafura, but definitely those are on their way. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is this is this is Thank you so much, Piers. Uh, I'll ask this question uh, specifically because of the constituency uh, that I represent. 
which is the Zimbabwe online content creators. Pierce, I, I think we've done this back and forth uh, where we have noticed the number of harassment and assault uh, on our various uh, young uh, journalists and online players. Uh, my, my issue of concern is uh, I'm so happy that you, you got to your point of admittance where we all agree that this is not uh, government policy. It is not the trajectory or the direction that you're taking in terms of principle as government. But we're so worried. I'm, so, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Commissioner Nyati is also here. What, what are we really doing practically? And can we get some form of warranty or a guarantee to say that these things are something practical is going to be done against this? Because we have spoken about this too many times. We, we do not have anything on record to say there's been an example of COP XYZ who has been taken to this uh, punishment uh, on a certain date or on, on, on any other record. But we, we have had apologies, statements. We write a lot of these statements and a lot of these petitions. But I think it's time we, we take this to the next level. Where you as government, you are representing uh, these various stakeholders. What are we doing practically to make sure that there's an example that is going to be set against the harassment of our various journalists? Because this has been going on for a long time. I'm, you and I have spoken about this subject um, a number of times. And it's one time you doorstepped me in my office and so on. Um, I said the problem here is culture. That's number one. Um, number two, I, I think we need to work a bit differently. And I'm saying a bit differently in terms of all parties. Because what happens is um, something happens. We're not trying to restrict flow of information. It goes on social media, it has got its var um, various versions and so on, and people are now responding to social media. In most cases, I don't know, um, Commissioner Nyat may speak a bit more uh, authoritatively on it. I, don't, I do not actually believe that uh, we have actual reports being made to police, where there is actually a case, there is a complainant, and somebody has to be investigated. We just see it on social media, and we respond to social media in, 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 in a number of cases. But when it, if, it, if there are any cases that definitely go to, that are reported, I think that becomes very operational. Um, and Commissioner Nyati may at some point be able to do justice to that question. I think when he makes his contribution, you may channel the question to him. Because, uh, but what I can give you is the government policy on it to say any crime should be reported and should be investigated, and if there is any, any enough evidence, rather, for somebody to be charged, people should be charged, and they should see their day in court. Um, I think when um, certain officers went a bit overboard in their standoff at uh, the showgrounds, that type of action was taken immediately. And that is what we expect in every situation where there is a, a bit of police excess or security service excess. No, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with the commissioner once he's, uh, he's, he's addressing. So I think that's all right for now. In terms of the outcome, we've not heard what became of those uh, uh, reports, and uh, we are always willing to finish you or some or give you some of the examples of cases where the, the reports have truly been uh, made I'll, with the police. I'll be very happy to have those. In all fifteen car reporter cases in Bronze of Charles, what case young Yapapi? The two of Funza Mapuri say out, Cocas young Yapapi. I think that's the way to go. But from our um, position as a minister in this government, it's very difficult for us to put it in your case, yes or die, yes or die, because we do not have that detail at Tombos here. But uh, as I said before in my presentation, we actually agree in pretty much all the time to say, okay, Apapa die. Right, ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for Honorable Mambana. Right, at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, we want to move on. Uh, we are a bit behind time, so I will invite a UNESCO representative, Mr. Yusuf Alumin, to come and make his presentation. Uh, 
I recognize the presence of the, of course he has just left, the Ministry of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services, the Principal Secretary, uh, the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee Chairperson, uh, representative of Zimbabwe Republican Police, Commissioner Paul Nyati, Zimbabwe Media Commission. I also believe the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission might be here, the Media Alliance of Zimbabwe, Southern African Editors Forum. I'm not sure if there are any members from the Zimbabwe Corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen from the media fraternity, friends of the media, a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, I'm standing here to deliver the UNESCO Director General's message on the occasion of the International Day to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists. And uh, this is the beginning of the message. One of the most important roles of journalists is to bring truth to the light. This means identifying, assembling, and verifying facts, and then accurately reporting their meaning. It places journalists in a unique and compelling position where, in the words of United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, they can speak truth to power. For too many journalists, however, telling the truth comes at a price. Truth and power do not always see eye to eye. Between 2010 and 2019, close to 900 journalists were killed while doing their job. More than 150 in the last two years alone. Many have lost their lives while covering conflicts, but far more are being killed outside of, of conflict situations. For investigating issues such as corruption, trafficking, political wrongdoing, human rights violations, and environmental issues. Death is not the only risk journalists face. Attacks on the press can take the form of threats, kidnappings, arrests, imprisonments, or harassment offline and online. And targeting women in particular and in targeting women in particular. While we can take some solace in the fact that the 2019 death toll for journalists was the lowest in the decade, these wider attacks are continuing at an alarming rate. And the COVID-19 crisis has led to new risks for media workers around the world. We can and should do more. In seven out of eight killings, the perpetrators of these crimes go unpunished. Journalists are essential in preserving the fundamental right to freedom of expression, guaranteed by Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. When journalists are attacked with impunity, there is a breakdown in security and judicial systems for all. States, therefore, have an obligation to protect journalists and ensure that the perpetrators of crimes against them are held accountable. Judges and prosecutors in particular have an important role to play in promoting swift and effective criminal proceedings. To this end, UNESCO has trained nearly 17,000 judicial operators in the recent years, including on issues of impunity and is developing guidelines in partnership with the International Association of Prosecutors to assist prosecutors in investigating crimes and attacks against journalists. To raise awareness and support these actions, UNESCO commemorates the International Day to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists every year on the 2nd of November. This year, our End Impunity campaign is highlighting some of the specific risks that journalists face in their quest to uncover the truth. On this day, I call on everyone to join the campaign and on all member states 
and international and non-governmental organizations to join forces to guarantee the safety of journalists and root out impunity. Only by investigating and prosecuting crimes against media professionals can we guarantee access to information and freedom of expression? Only by speaking truth to power can we advance peace, justice, and sustainable development in our societies. End of the statement. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yusuf. Another round of applause for him. Indeed, uh, truth and power do not see eye to eye, but uh, I, 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 I'm quoting you, sir. But uh, it's pertinent and it's critical for our media to continuously speak truth to power. Power has to be made accountable, and I'm happy we are gathered as members of the media to discuss such issues. Eventually, we are going to win. Right, at this moment, I am going to invite uh, Comrade Nigel to come and present on resolutions of the last media, the last media and the police, the police engagement. Comrade Nigel, sir. Okay. Let us move on. I will call on the, the, the next speaker. That's a Assistant Commissioner uh, Nyati to present on uh, remarks on the state of journalism safety in Zimbabwe. Commissioner Nyati, you are welcome. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the chairperson of the Media Alliance of Zimbabwe, uh, the PS, the Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Information, uh, Publicity and Broadcasting Services, uh, Permanent Secretary Mangwana, the UNESCO representative, Mr. Yusuf, the chairperson of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Media, uh, Honorable Mukon, the Honorable MP, uh, Ms. Chikwinya, uh, Honorable MP uh, Paradza, uh, media bodies, uh, representatives, uh, colleagues. Uh, the Zimbabwe Republic Police Fully, fully, I reiterate, and this is the message from the Commissioner General of Police, uh, Commissioner General T.G. Matanga, fully recognizes the importance the media in Zimbabwe, the role it plays in terms of information dissemination, in terms of even sending out police messages to questionize the public about crime, crime prevention and how they can safeguard themselves. So we are in this together. There is no way the police can operate. There is no way the police can reach out to the people without the assistance of the media. On a daily basis, ladies and gentlemen, this is true. This is a fact. And in this regard, we are also aware of the new normal, the new work environment in which the media and us police are operating. This environment, ladies and gentlemen, has got its own challenges. And some of these challenges are even affecting our relations, as alluded to by the various presenters, who include 
the Permanent Secretary for the Minister of Information, Publicity and the Broadcasting Services. And uh, as police, we condemn any form of attack on a journalist. Any form of attack on journalists. And we encourage that uh, as we commemorate this day, the day to end impunity for crimes against journalists, let's come together. Let's continue to find each other. Because if we are not finding each other, definitely our work will not be easy. Especially if we aim to save the public with correct information. You see, because uh, some of the issues which have been highlighted, yes, there are reports which have been made against police officers where some journalists have alleged that they have been attacked by police officers. And we reiterate what we have said in our engagement with the Zuj, in our engagement with the MISA, in our engagement with the Media Alliance, that uh, reporters should feel free to report so that investigations can be conducted and action can be taken. Uh, the challenge which we have in following some of these reports, I have taken note that uh, MISA, they said they've got about 30 or so reports. Zuji, they've said about 20. Media Alliance, they said about 20 cases. I request that if possible, I be availed with those cases so that I can make a follow-up. And I mean it, I want to make a follow-up on those cases which have been brought to the attention of the police where they are now. You see, do we really have evidence or not? If the cases are due to go for court, what's stopping them from going to court? Or if we have no evidence, where have the cases just gone dead? But one of the issues which I also appeal with colleagues in terms of the justice system in our country, when a report is made, the police has to investigate. And in investigating, there are several issues which are looked at. And this is, uh, you know, affecting some of these cases. And uh, we appeal for cooperation. We appeal for, you know, assistance. Because you need evidence for a case to appear before a court. You see. And in most cases, they say they want witnesses. Where you have, say, an officer who says, I have been performing my duty. We have a journalist who says I have been attacked. But we also want to collaborate that by having independent witnesses. This has been a major challenge. I think the Honorable MPs can even attest to this. This has been a major challenge. You see, at the end of the day, it makes the job of the investigating officer very difficult indeed. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to even colleagues, where you see one of us being attacked, Please let's avail ourselves as witnesses. No one will victimize you because no one is above the law. No one will threaten you because no one is above the law. So this is what I want to say. And also, there are some situations where I feel that uh, some of us are being set up. Eh? Where you find that somebody invites you to say, I've got a press conference. I've got this engagement. But uh, there is, you know, something behind I can cite an incident which happened in Headfield, where this church was having, you know, serious differences. And uh, one of them invited the media. After inviting the media, the other group, they said, no, there is invasion of privacy. Police, can you come in? And uh, as the police officers were called in, uh, some of the colleagues, they alerted me, and I was trying to find out what is really happening. Then I established that journalists were caught in crossfire. Eh? Crossfire because of this dispute. And we advised these guys to put the house in order. To say, if you guys have got your differences, please allow the media to do their work. So those are, them, those are some of the challenges which face the police, ladies and gentlemen. Which I also appeal that because of the nature of the police work, you also need to take note that sometimes when situations happen, yes, our officers they will go maybe above board. But there are some people who are also part of the problem, especially 
when some of these activities, you know, okay. And also, the issue of social media, as we talk about uh, the safety of, of, of journalists, I know Tony uh, raised some issues, where you find that uh, these days, we are also grappling with, with, with citizen journalism. And the citizen journalism has got its own strength. It has got its own advantages and disadvantages. It has really affected us. If in our relations, they are also now being shaped by the so-called citizen journalism. Where you find that uh, when we talk of journalism, the traditional you know, journalism field, we talk of ethical standards. We talk of ethics. But with citizen journalism, the ethics are no longer being observed. Whether somebody is saying something which is correct or not correct, something which has happened or has not happened, people, they just want to be, to be the first with the news. And in trying to do so, you will find that there are people who are also going to report the police. Eh? So it's a challenge which I appeal to this August House to find a balance. As we interact, as we engage, what do we do with citizen journalism? You see, not to curtail them, but how do we strike a balance between the rights of those who claim that uh, citizen journalism is affecting us and uh, the operational way the media we know has been operating. So we don't want to affect the work of journalists, but we want to enable the work of the journalists to be effective. Then coming to COVID-19, I, 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 I took note of what the PS said. When uh, COVID-19 uh, came, no one was prepared for it. This is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, when uh, various social instruments were put in place, when they were promulgated, you know, they really affected the work of the police, you see, because uh, certain sectors, at first, they were allowed to operate. Certain sectors, they were not uh, allowed. But the immense work of the journalists, they were not initially outlined, especially on the 30th of March 2020. And uh, after what happened in Gweru, what happened in Harare, and what happened in Chinoy, we quickly, quickly communicated with the Minister of Information and the Zimbabwe Media Commission. And uh, it was unanimously agreed that the accreditation cards for 2019, those which were expiring on 31st December 2019, or had expired on 31st December 2019, they were still valid because the current registration process was not complete. And we communicated with all police commanders in the various provinces and districts to say, please do not hinder the work of journalists. Allow them to continue with their work as long as they produce their 2019 media accreditation cards. You see, and to all colleagues who communicated with us, to all colleagues who communicated with the parent ministry, this was the arrangement. But we have a challenge with culture, ladies and gentlemen. In any organization, including in the, in, 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 in the journalism you know, uh, fraternity, where there are people who think that uh, you know, they don't want to move with the time. And I appeal to colleagues that as we talk about the safety of journalists, let's also assist police officers. Let's also assist the security men to recognize that uh, you know, we are living in a globalized world. We are living in an involve, you know, evolving world where we also need to change our culture, you see. We, 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 we need to embrace what is happening now, especially when the government talks about Vision 2030, when you talk about the Second Republic. Things cannot be you know, the same, cannot be the same as the old system. And this is what is, we have been grappling with, you know, police officers, to say, guys, for us to have good relations with the journalists, let's not hinder them in their work. Eh? And uh, I'm happy that uh, despite what happened between uh, April, March, uh, up to maybe July, currently we don't have major, major obstacles in terms of the way journalists are operating in terms of the way journalists are interacting with the police. And I want to thank you, colleagues, to be honest with what you've done. You have supported us as the police. Because some of the cases which we have unearthed it is because of journalists. You know, it's an open secret that some of our guys have not been honest at the checkpoints. 
and uh, we have managed to gather information because of the journalism uh, fraternity and we want that work to continue because without you guys we cannot be where we are today so i really want to appreciate the work which is being done by the media in zimbabwe and uh, for mashingo i'm also concerned with the, what is happening in mashingo i have uh, spoken to the mira guys I have been I have been speaking to Golden, and I also appeal to Misa, to Zuj, to Media Alliance of Zimbabwe, to continue engaging with us so that we can find a way of trying to address the problem in Mashingo. It's not a secret that uh, the relations in Mashingo uh, between the media and the police are not that good. You see, and the, the the command is full away. The police command is full away. Because I've told them that we need to address the situation in Mashingo before it gets out of hand. But I also want to appeal to, 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 to the media to say, as you perform your work, there are certain security issues which you must take note of. Eh? There are certain people who give us information, and some of the information which they give us is not correct. We also need to check it. Let's scrutinize it so that our relations are not affected. And then uh, lastly, the issue of, 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 of fake news. It's a fact. Fake news are, is affecting even the police in terms of our operations. It's affecting even our, our, our relations. So I also appeal that uh, as the current legislative process in terms of the way the media is operating is, 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 is taking shape, let's also continue to find each other and deal with the issue of fake news. I'm happy that... Uh, what our, our, our colleagues in, in, in Media Alliance of Zimbabwe have done, Zuj and Misa, where they have engaged us, if a story is not correct, it has been quickly pulled down. And I want to applaud you guys to say you have stood for the truth. So do not tie. Continue standing for the truth, and it definitely will work very well. And uh, we take note that uh, as some of the journalists perform their duty, especially the up-and-coming young journalists. I also want to appeal to them, please use polite language. I know what happened in Chinoy, where this journalist alleged that he was arrested, but when we conducted investigations, our PR guys were on the ground. We found that uh, there was use of foul language, and I'm happy uh, Mr. Dongo CG continued doing the good work, because when we engaged, we agreed that uh, the language which had been used by our colleague was not proper. And also, Let's take note that uh, as our guys perform their work, there are people who are coming forward to report to say, so and so has demanded a bribe from me. And those cases, the police can only do investigations. It's not in our purview to chase those people away. We can't deny them their right to make reports. So I also appeal to colleagues that as our guys perform their duties, they must allow people who want to report against them, especially issues to do with the you know, bribe. It is only investigations which can clear them, like that KCSD which you are talking about, which I said is currently under investigations. And also, due to lockdown, we, 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 we lead various private lives, ladies and gentlemen, as the media. When you are having your family functions, when you are you know, interacting with colleagues in your private capacities, when you are arrested, please separate that from your journalism work. I know what happened that, 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 that day, where this guy who will not slander anybody, where this guy was, was uh, they were drinking beer uh, with the <laughs> colleagues, and as they were drinking beer, it is the lockdown period, they were approached and they were arrested. And after arrested, then he, he thought maybe the only way I can go out of this was to claim that I was doing my work. But he was having, you know, friends, family friends. And uh, it, make, it became very clear when the wife went to the police and said, no, he is not at work today, but I just want to assist him. I'm telling the truth. CG knows the incident. I just want to assist him to come out. So these are some of the issues which we are saying. The police and the media, we are working together very closely, ladies and gentlemen. Even when you face challenges in terms of the way you work, please maintain the lines of communication open and they definitely will work together very well. And I want to assure you, we are against any form of harassment to journalists, any form of maybe assault to journalists. So those cases must be reported 
and let's try as much as possible to gather evidence. Thank you very much. Another pom pom for Assistant Commissioner Nyati. Zawoni kwa wanyati, siya bohunga, tuwalumba logo. Right, ladies and gentlemen, at this moment I will invite members or colleagues, we have one or two questions for Assistant Commissioner Nyati. Let us be precise or straight to the point. Right. Come with me. This one. Uh, my my tabas are good. Uh, when you are in the Ningo tipushe o mundi chendere o turu yuche mihuzo zagatu wande gomuri asemuka na onda ni aso wana pamuri auri much more formal because of some certain pertinent issues adrugu sanga na nao I appreciate you mentioned an issue of ethics and values specifically on how our young and upcoming online content creators should need to to abide to basic journalism ethics is a point noted. Uh, we do appreciate that issue. Uh, as, a, as an issue of concern, I will follow up with the last conversation that I was having uh, with Vamangwana uh, on issues of culture shift, uh, specifically with the police. I understand you have also made it very clear, Commissioner Guti. Mapurisa is not your policy uh, as far as harassment and victimization on journalists is concerned. Uh, I, I think you are much more well placed uh, to, to help us understand. Uh, why we haven't really seen anything that has been done against our police officers. We have come out uh, in an, 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 an ethical behavior and some of these responses that they, they have shown even on camera, uh, they, they are not uh, responses that would have expected anyone, uh, police officers, to be, to, be, to be behaving in such a, a way. And you get to wonder if uh, some of these people have got an uh, ulterior motive or agenda. And these things have been happening too many times. We've captured this and we haven't really seen any, any, any powerful statement from the police coming against this. So, in Changuka and Muzanguka, one thing is I got to one day, Mundre Giro, Ning and Nagayu Miremi. And this is good. There's an issue that really bothers us. Because if you, are, if, if you have been attacked and you have been harassed by the police, it, it, it really is very difficult. Uh, it's easier on paper when you're talking right now, but it's very difficult for any sane journalist to then go and say, I've been beaten up by a police, reporting to the police officers. So it's, it, it, this is the, one of the reasons why you probably don't receive much of these reports. To us, we are saying, who is going to police the police? Is it possible, I don't know how this can be done in any way, uh, where we, we, we can have other various uh, facets, maybe through your PR officers, uh, your PR office, where we can have, I know you are very reachable at times, but you are not always reachable because of many things that are happening. Is it possible for us specifically, maybe journalists, if we can make a request to say uh, there could be set up a commission or a, a, a certain hotline numbers where we know we've got some certain people who are not actively stationed at the certain police station at Rova, it, it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense and it defeats the whole purpose for anyone because no one can police the police, especially when we are under siege. Uh, that, that's, that's the first issue that I would have wanted to ask. Uh, quickly, just running on my issues, the second issue, uh, we, we have a very hot issue that is affecting us specifically as uh, online content creators. The case of Impala, where we saw, uh, I'm sure everyone saw this issue where, where uh, uh, a Zinasu student uh, was making a press conference and the police officers, they chose to be spectators on that certain day. They gave themselves more than 100 meters from the event and all of a sudden we saw three truckloads of unmarked vehicles. They came through, they beat up journalists up until now. Uh, cameras were stolen, journalists were beaten up, police reports were all made. I personally made uh, follow-ups with all the journalists that were harassed and attacked to make sure that they've all reported and they've given us uh, the police report numbers. They've all reported and to date no one has received a single response. It's like the state is, is, is complicit in this matter. Nothing has ever happened and no one has covered anything. And when we start seeing such issues, we get worried. When you speak to us, you, you are clear that it's not a matter of policy, but on ground, we see other things happening, and we get to wonder, 
who was really behind that abduction and, and, and the beating up that happened at Impala? And why is it the state investigators have not yet found a clue on who was involved in that issue? But it, it's very funny, it's basic investigation that we all do as journalists and as, 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 as police officers. It, it, it's pointing that uh, there were some people who were arrested. And the people who arrest, we were arrested were taken by the same people beating up people. And when you start to ask simple questions, with the IOs to say, but if you do not know the perpetrators and, and the people who, who, who harassed and took away equipment from the journalists, who then arrested these journalists? You have no IO or, or investigating officer or anyone who's in charge who's willing to respond to answer your questions. And you're actually worried that the more you ask, you may be detained as well. So these are serious issues, specifically the Impala issue, uh, that we need you to help us accelerate. And, and, and this is a case that we, we are seeking uh, your express authorities that this issue uh, may be fully uh, investigated because it, it is still standing as, as, as we speak where more than uh, seven journalists were harassed. Um, uh, just before I quickly close, there's an issue of uh, COVID letters. Uh, Vanyati, we, we don't know. It seems the law was very clear that it's not a requirement for any citizen uh, to be moving around with those letters. But Makona Meso, we, across the street, we've got police officers and some army officers who are still asking for some of these letters. Uh, what is the position of the police and the law enforcement as far as the free movement of Zimbabweans? Are we supposed to be having our brothers and sisters there, civilians, moving around with COVID letters? Because we've got police officers who are still asking people about COVID letters. So I think for now I'll give others an opportunity. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. I just want to buttress Spanish Rataruan Antonio. It's really important that uh, if we are to deal with the culture issue and if there's going to be a culture shift, something has to be done and it has to be done now in order for the police officers, for instance, to begin to realize the seriousness of this issue. Whilst you are saying that as police you are against any form of harassment or assault against journalists, this is happening on the ground. Whilst you say that... Um, uh, we need to use proper language and stuff like that. We have a case where the police officers are the ones who are using wrong languages to us. What then happens in the case where an officer is the one that starts the harassment and in defense of themselves, the journalists will end up using also that language. Because we need to realize that uh, just because we are journalists, we are equally human beings. Another issue that I want to raise is the issue of the Impala car rental issue that happened. We really need to come to the bottom of this issue because the people were seen and there are video footage to that effect which has been circulated. Is it not standard procedure for police to investigate if there is a crime that has been committed anyway, whether there is someone who has reported or not? Because clearly I think there is a case of um, lost faith in the way police with issues. I will take you for example, Commissioner, uh, it may not be a journalism issue, but there was a theft that took place and we went to report to the police and we were told that we'll use more money following up on the case than the things that were stolen. So you better just replace the stolen thing. So I think there's an attitude within the police that needs to be dealt with. If it's a culture issue, mupurisa aita something, apanishwe or something that is made public so that other junior officers will know could if I mistreat people and I, if I mistreat a journalist, it is actually a crime. Because it is a threat in one road, can only journalist as wrote our song. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Uh, the commissioner has been blasted for too long. Let me at least thank him. I, 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 I report mainly uh, per ground, so I'd like to commend the officers with the treatment. There's a, a bit of change. I'm not saying they are now 100% okay. The people who are manning harvest house, the last time we were there, they really uh, talked to us nicely. I'm not a true guy as usual. So, uh, tell them to keep it up and maybe they can uh, be a bit better. Now, my contribution. 
uh, as someone who was beaten up during this lockdown uh, by officers uh, who claimed that journalists are writing falsehoods. Uh, now my point is, I do not think the, the police should really be worried about what falsehoods are published or, or shared by citizen journalists and journalists themselves because the person who is affected will come and report to you. There is no need to put it but of what my journalist on the road. You see, so I, I find those kind of answers uh, as, as base for an excuse if, pol if a police officer beats you up. Journalists are lying, citizen journalists are lying, so we can beat you up, something like that. Uh, there, is, there is a very competent board, the Voluntary Media Council of Zimbabwe. It has been very competent, it has done its, its job uh, in a way which has left us all content that we have something which can help us, where there are grievances between Muna Nyepiro and a journalist, Nemuna Snau Nyepiro, or something like that. And then my, my other question is, as a public institution, do you read reports by the Media Institute of Southern Africa, by the Zimbabwe Peace Project, by the Zimbabwe Human Rights NGO Forum? Are you worried as an institution that you are top of human rights violations in the country over the lockdown period, contributing 75% of uh, violations alongside the army? Are you worried about that? And uh, do you have a deliberate plan to clean the system so people love you again as they did in November 2017? Thank you. Comrade Leo, uh, at this moment I will just allow Comrade Chakanyuka to be the last speaker in the segment, and then after he's, he's done this business of asking the general committee what we will break for lunch, and then after we have we are fully revitalized, energized, we can then ask our questions again, and then he will respond. So over to you, Comrade Chakanyuka. Okay, thank you. Mine is a short one. Uh, I think Pane Nyaya and Dango suggest that Anguti Yamutara Nyanya Kune Guti Marginalis Aras. Then Anotar is no reporter. Kumaburiza, Anondua Arasa as well. And Oninges Nunyazo Buddha. Don't go out maybe Mukawene, some kind of a victim a friendly office. Says no way to go to so guti marginalists ano it has ano anam kano guti ano no terrorwa. Eh, kuneva no asiri directly involved ne harassment. I'm sure you can think around that. Then the second one is pane nyaye culture change. Yataro na wamanguana. It looks like inu kora mbaji is culture change, culture change. So murugu itei what program do you have to ensure that there is culture change? Muma puri sayo wa ya kuti zinzwe because they are behaving like people in the first republic when we are in the Second Republic. So I think Inyadaku address was very aggressive. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Costa Nkomo, a journalist uh, with uh, uh, newsmbaku.com. Uh, I just want to cement uh, the position that my colleague, my, the last person we have spoken about the, the police uh, not having the capacity to prosecute or to follow up on the crimes that would have been committed by their, by their colleagues. I have got a case, if you've seen me here. I was assaulted in the streets of Harare in January, on the 9th of January 2019, and I reported the case at Harare Central Police Station. And there is a sergeant called Mandeva Varira in Office 20. I don't know if he has changed. He's the guy who is handling that case. And it's, a, it's been a year. We're all, almost going to two years now. That case has not been resolved. It's there. Sergeant Mambara, you can talk to him. He asked me to provide the pictures of the people who assaulted me. I gave him the pictures. I sent him the videos. But that case has not been resolved in any way. There is no feedback from him even up to now. I incurred injuries that uh, if it was not me, sir, that assisted me to be treated at the Parreñato Hospital. I don't know how I was going to foot that bill because by then things were not fine for me. But thank God now it's fine. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I just want to reiterate that the, your subordinates have no capacity to follow up on the crimes that have been committed by the fellow police officers on the ground. So we request as journalists 
to have a different platform that we believe in, that it has got capacity to solve the problems of assault of journalists, because this thing is ongoing on a daily basis. Before the end of this week, you will have cases of journalists who have been assaulted. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues, for your questions. I think, uh, Assistant Commissioner Nyati, you were ready and taking the proverbial sucker punches. And after lunch, you will be ready to respond. So at this moment, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us break for lunch. Let us try to be back by quarter past two. This is half past one now. So in the interest of time, let us try to come back at quarter past two. Lunch will be served just outside in the foyer there. So let us go and enjoy the lunch. Hey. I love food. I hope you do as well.